Hi guys. Okay, this is going to be a very quick video where I cover the difference between Addison's disease versus Cushing's. It's very important, guys, that you understand the differences in the pathophysiology, the signs and symptoms, and of course, the nursing interventions and treatments. I promise, guys, it's going to be a short video and you're going to get it. It's really not that hard. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to cover is Addison's disease. I've highlighted right here, Addison's disease. So what is Addison's disease? It's hypo secretion of adrenal cortex hormones. Remember the adrenal cortex, if you take your two hands and you put it behind your back, right? Right um, behind your back where if you take your two hands, you put them back there, right where your palms would be, that's where your kidneys sit. And right above your kidneys are your adrenal glands. Now your adrenal glands, what happens with Addison's disease is there's a hypo secretion of those hormones. So the adrenal gland is not secreting enough of those hormones. Now look what it says. It says decreased levels of glucocorticoids. You want to know what those glucocorticoids are? Sugar. Decreased levels of mineral corticoids. You want to know what the mineral corticoids are? Sodium. And, um, Let's see what it says, which leads to hyponatremia, hyperkalemia. And let me explain that. Guys, sodium and potassium goes opposite ways, right? So automatically, you know that sodium is going to be low, the potassium is going to be up. And you know with increased potassium, patient already has risk for what? Dysrhythmia. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Um, hypoglycemia and decreased vascular volume and it's fatal if not treated. So let me explain to you what's happening. When it comes to Addison's disease, I want you to think of Addison's where we need to add salt, add sex, and add sugar. And what do I mean by that? In Addison's disease, we have to add salt. That's our sodium, the mineral corticosteroids. Patient doesn't have enough because there's hyposecretion of that adrenal gland. We need to add sex. When I say sex, I'm talking about the androgen hormones that is um, hyposecreted and add sugar. When I say sugar, I'm talking about the glucocorticoids because it's not being secreted enough, okay? So when you think of Addison's, think that we need to add salt, mineral corticosteroids, sex, androgen hormones, and sugar, glucocorticosteroids, okay? Think of those three and it's really gonna help guide you to what the treatment's gonna be, signs and symptoms, and the nursing interventions. And remember guys, Whenever the sodium is down, what's potassium going to be up because sodium and potassium are inverse. They go the opposite ways. So let's look at the assessment. Sorry, guys, if I sound like I'm rushing a little bit, but I'm about to go teach a class. So I'm trying to get through this, but you guys are going to get it. Okay. So signs and symptoms, hyponatremia. That's our sodium, guys. Sodium's going to be down. Remember, we need to add what? Salt. That's the... Um, the mineral corticosteroids. So our sodium is gonna be down. Remember your normal sodium is 135 to 145. So this patient's sodium is gonna be lower than that 135. Remember if sodium's down, potassium's what? Up. Remember your ther um, potassium has a very narrow therapeutic range. It's 3.5 to five and that's it. 3.5 to five, anything higher than five, that patient can have cardiac dysrhythmias. And since the sodium is down, that potassium's up, we're going to be concerned with cardiac issues, okay? Just have that in the back of your mind. Blood sugar, down. Remember, we need to add sugar. That's our glucocortical steroids. That's going to be down. Remember, normal sugar, 70 to 110. Decreased blood volume. Let's think about this, guys, and it needs to make sense to you. If the sodium is down, which I already talked to you about, what follows sodium? Fluid. So it makes sense that that fluid is going to be down. If there's no fluid in the blood vessel, that means there's no force against the vessels, which means the blood pressure is going to be down. It all makes sense, guys. So yes, the patient's going to have low blood pressure. The patient's going to have weight loss. Hyperpigmentation. When it comes to Addison's disease, um, that hyperpigmentation, sometimes it's called the eternal tan. This person looks like they have a tan 24 seven, it's winter time and they still have a tan. That's that hyperpigmentation that they have, decreased resistance to stress. Let me tell you why they have decreased resistance to stress. Remember your adrenal glands, that's what secretes those fight or flight hormones. When you are exposed to stress, whether it's a physical stress, somebody punch you in the face, whether it's psychological stress, you walk in the house and you see your mate with somebody else, 
Whatever that stress is, when your body comes across stress, your adrenal hormones are secrete, supposed to secrete the hormone, your adrenal glands are supposed to secrete those hormones for fight or flight, but it's not working the way it's supposed to. It's not secreting those hormones, those steroids, the way it's supposed to. So that's why the patient's going to have decreased resistance to stress. So that already tells you guys that a patient with Addison's disease, we have to tell them to stay away from stressful situations. Your husband's acting a fool and don't want to act right or go to therapy, leave him, right? I'm just joking. I, you don't tell your patient to leave their spouse, but you're going to tell them to stay away from stressful situations, including um, uh, people who are sick, because guess what? An upper respiratory infection, catching, getting the flu, getting sick. Isn't that a physical stress on the body? Absolutely it is. Okay. So let's look at therapeutic management. We're right here. Let me see, I'm doing on time. So therapeutic management with Addison's disease, you must add hormone, the hormone that the patient's missing salt, sex, sugar. I talked to you guys about that. You're going to monitor their vital signs, look at their electrolytes, monitor their glucose. Remember, that's something else. Remember how with Addison's, the sodium's low, so the potassium is high. We're very concerned with that high potassium because the potassium has a very narrow therapeutic range of 3.5 to 5, right? Here's the thing. Um, glucose, low glucose can kill you just as fast. Hypoglycemia is much more deadly than hyperglycemia. So we're going to be checking that patient's blood sugar and make sure that it doesn't drop too low. That is going to be a priority. The blood sugar is going to be a priority. The cardiac patient's cardiac rhythm is going to be a priority. So absolutely, you're going to be checking the patient's uh, blood sugar. You're going to administer replacement adrenal hormones as needed. Whichever hormones are low, you're going to repl replace it. It makes sense. Look at this, lifelong medication therapy needed. You have to teach the patient that you're going to be taking these uh, medications for the rest of your life. So for example, if the patient had their adrenal glands um, removed, guess what? They cannot live without those hormones that the adrenal glands are supposed to uh, secrete. They cannot survive. So they're going to have to take those replacements for the rest of their lives if they want to live. Okay, so you have to teach that to the patient. Teach them to manage stress because remember, those adrenal glands are responsible for those stress hormones. Managing stress in a patient with adrenal insufficiency is important, muy importante, actually. If the adrenal glands are stressed further, it can result in Addisonian crisis. Addisonian crisis, guys, is Addison's disease times a thousand. So everything I just talked to you about that can possibly happen to this patient, imagine it times a thousand. And that's, the, that's what you have with Addison's crisis. So we do not want that to happen. So let's talk about Addison's crisis. We're right here. Addison's crisis, it's caused by an acute exacerbation of Addison's disease. So a patient has Addison's disease. Now something's happened to cause an extreme stress on them, whether it's emotional stress, psychological stress, physical stress, but it's made the problem much, much worse. It causes severe electrolyte disturbances so that sodium severely low, by the way, that low sodium can cause all types of CNS um, uh, issues, right? And it can cause a uh, high potassium. High potassium can cause what? Cardiac dysrhythmias. Uh, monitor serum electrolytes and cardiovascular status closely. You want to administer the adrenal hormones needed. Whichever adrenal hormones that patient need, needs that they're low in, you're going to replace them. Signs and symptoms, nausea, vomiting, confusion, abdominal pain, extreme weakness, hypoglycemia, dehydration, decreased blood pressure. You have to be able to recognize these signs and symptoms, guys. If you get a test question, that already tells you your patient has Addison's disease and all of a sudden they're giving you these signs and symptoms, a bell needs to go off of your head and say, whoa, the problem's gotten much worse. We've gone from Addison's disease to Addisonian crisis, okay? During times of stress, increase sodium intake. Because remember in Addison's, the sodium intake, the sodium, excuse me, is severely low. And remember your therapeutic range, 135 to 145. So you want to increase sodium intake. A decrease in aldosterone leads to increase in excretion of sodium. And guys, that's your Addison's in a nutshell. Now let's talk about the opposite. 
we're going to go from Addison's to Cushing. So let me scroll. Let me see if I can scroll this a little bit. I guess not. Guys, give me a second. I'm all lost now. Where's my page? Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. All right, Cushing's disease on the very bottom, it says hypersecretion. Now we have too much of our salt, sex, and sugar. Hypersecretion of glucocorticoids, that's our sugar, leading to elevated levels of cortisol. Greater incidence in women. We see this more in women than we do men, and it's life-threatening if untreated, just like Addison's is. So let's look at assessment. Hypernatremia. Remember in Addison's disease, the sodium was down? Well, in Cushing's, look at this, the sodium's up. So we're dealing with sodium more than what? 145. So if the sodium's up, what do you think's happening to the potassium? Potassium's low. Remember, sodium and potassium have an inverse relationship. Look at this. Potassium is down hyperglycemia, the sugar's up. Remember in Addison's where the patient didn't have enough sugar, they didn't have enough glucocorticosteroids? Well, here in Cushing's, they got way too much hyperglycemia, right? And here's something else I want you to think about. In Cushing's, they have too much salt. What follows salt? Fluid. So it stands to reason, guys, it makes sense that we're seeing increased fluid volume. It makes sense that we're seeing hypertension because along with all of that salt, comes all of that sugar. What's blood pressure? Blood pressure is the force that's being exerted against the vessel walls. So with increased volume is increased force, hence your hypertension. So it makes sense. Of course, the blood pressure is gonna be up. Absolutely. Next, prone to infection. Why do you think when it comes to diabetic patients, we are always we're always monitoring them closely for signs and symptoms of infection? We're always teaching them to, you know, um, check their lower extremities for infection. Bacteria and pathogens love dark, wet, sugary environments. So any patient that is at risk for hyperglycemia, lots of uh, sugar in the blood, they're going to be at risk for infection. Okay, so I, that's another concept for you guys to think about, not only for Cushing's, any disorder, if a patient has a lot of sugar in the blood, infection is going to be a concern. So yes, they're going to be prone to infection. Moon face, guys, classic symptoms of Cushing is that moon face, that buffalo hump. And let me explain to you what happens in Cushing's. In Cushing's, because there's hypersecretion of the adrenal um, uh, cortex, too much secretion of the glucocortical steroids, your mineral cortical steroids, your androgen hormones, there, what happens is a fat distribution that is not equal. So what happens is you tend to see the patient's face all puffy like this. I can't even do it, but they have a moon face and they call it moon face because um, of the puffiness, and you'll see a pocket of fat in the back of their neck, and that's what's called the buffalo hump. Those are classic symptoms of Cushing's, and you'll see that the patient will have a very big trunk, right, but their extremities, their arms, and their legs are very, very skinny. When you guys have a chance, go ahead, go Google Cushing image just to see what that patient looks like, okay? They're going to be at their, their skin is very, very thin and they bruise very easily. You'll see purple striae, they um at risk for edema. All of those are classic symptoms of your Cushing patient. What's the therapeutic management gonna be? 
you have excess Cushing of hormones. So you're going to be monitoring again the electrolytes because in this case with Cushing, they've got too much of that salt, sex, sugar we talked about. So we're going to be monitoring the electrolytes, bringing them down as necessary. Check the cardiovascular status. Prevent fluid overload. Why? Remember, because of the high sodium, patient's going to have high uh, fluids. They're going to be holding on to all the fluids and the fluid's going to have to go somewhere. So eventually it may spill where into their lungs and you start hearing crackles in the lungs. Are you ever supposed to hear crackles in the lungs? Absolutely not. So we're going to monitor them for fluid overload. That patient might even have to get diuretics to get all, get rid of all that fluid, right? So fluid overload, respirations, first priority. You better be listening to those lung sounds. And the minute you hear crackles, you're notifying the physician because it means that the condition's gotten worse. Cardiovascular uh, feature, capillary fragility, and it, that's what results in that patient having easy bruising. Remember, the skin's very thin, the capillaries are very fragile, so that patient will bruise very easily. So something else also you have to be concerned about this type of patient is safety, safety from injury. You're going to provide skin care, meticulous wound care, because remember, the sugar's high, and what likes sugar? pathogens, bacteria. We don't want that patient to get an infection. So we're going to do meticulous uh, skin care. And remember that patient's skin is very thin. So let's say they're bed bound. You better use a draw sheet or a lift sheet to move them in bed because just the friction of their skin against the sheet, that might be enough to cause their skin to open up. Now that patient's got decreased skin integrity and that's a perfect environment for pathogens to go into that cut. So we have to be very careful about the skin. Um, provide for patient safety. Adrenalectomy, that's removal of the adrenal glands. And sometimes it's necessary. This patient has Cushing's and the adrenal glands are just secreting way too much of those hormones. Sometimes the patients are just going to have to have uh, the adrenal glands removed. Now that brings another set of problems because guess what? You were secreting too much of these um, hormones, right? So they removed it, but guess what? Remember, I told you this already, you need those hormones to survive. So you went from having way too much to nothing at all to now needing replacement for the rest of your life. Let me repeat that again. If the Cushing's is too severe, patient may have to have an adrenalectomy, which is removal of the adrenal glands. If a patient has an adrenalectomy, if those adrenal glands get removed, in order for them to survive, they have to get those hormones. So they're going to be on hormone replacement for the rest of their lives just like that patient with Addisonian um, uh, disease, okay? So anyway, adrenalectomy, surgical removal of adrenal gland, we're gonna protect the patient from infection because again, remember the blood sugar would be high, what loves sugar, bacteria and pathogens. And Cushing's is often caused by a tumor on the adrenal or the pituitary gland. So guys, that is the difference between Addison's and Cushing's. I hope this cleared it up for you because I know that so many students seem to confuse the two. So I hope this was helpful and I definitely um, will be doing more teaching. Maybe, maybe the next um, video I'll do is gonna be on the theochromocytoma. That's what's up next. Let me highlight it so you guys can see. My next video will probably be covering this, but I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please, in the comments, let me know if this video was helpful and also let me know what you'd like to see me teach more of or do videos of. Something that I did before that I didn't realize when you guys were commenting, telling me you wanna see more of this or more of that, I'm so used to making videos with questions. I forgot that I started making lessons for you and so I would automatically reply to you, oh, you can find, find this in this playlist or that playlist or this playlist, not realizing you were asking for lessons and not questions. So whatever it is that you want to see me cover, please, in the comment section, let me know what subject you want me to cover, but also let me know if you want me to cover that subject in questions or in a lesson format. Does that make sense? All right, guys, thank you so much for spending the short amount of time with me. I promise I'll be coming back with another lesson and you guys will be seeing me soon.